the RV-1 was discovered, it took quite a while to uh, negotiate its purchase uh, because the gentleman that had the airplane had it for 20 hours, flew it, a, had it for 20 years, flew it for a thousand hours, and really didn't want to sell it. But a little perseverance, and he said, you know, that sounds like a good program, and agreed to sell the airplane. Next was to convince this man to allow the home-built community the opportunity to make sure it was airworthy, allow it to go on tour, and ultimately partnered with the EAA and donate it to the museum. It took you a little while to come to that decision, but we twisted his arm and it, he finally agreed that that might be the right thing to do. It's rare in anyone's life that they become a part of aviation history. Mr. Van Grunsman allowed us as a community, uh, hundreds of us, to become a part of aviation history using his airplane. And for that, I thank you, Mr. Van Grunsman. Basically, the RV-1, I, during the relatively few years I had it, I just made a few continual improvements until we got about as far as I figured I, I could go with that airframe, and then we moved on to the RV-3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The whole idea, the whole way along, is to make an airplane that's enjoyable to fly, useful to fly, and as safe as we can. A lot of the success behind the whole uh, RV thing has been the community, the fact that people network, they work together, they're all a bunch of great people. I wish you could have all been down at Dodge County Airport when we did the, the briefing and all for this flight with all of those airplanes, all of the pilots, the level of professionalism and community that was exhibited there was really quite something to behold. I was the last to take off, so I see all the airplanes formed up in front of me and I just got to say, it was very, very moving. and It was great uh, gratitude I have for all of the effort people have put in to make things like this happen. It's about all I have, except now the key to the airplane, which I am hesitant to turn over. <laughs> Would sure like to discuss keeping this airplane in flying condition so I can come back next year. I would say, I would think it's safe to say that this is the key to innovation. Would you agree? Yeah. That is the key to innovation. Mr. Van Grosen, before you get off the stage, I know you're not real keen on things like this sometimes, but, but let me tell you on behalf of our 176,000 members and growing, you represent the very best of what's possible among EAers. You represent the very best about what's possible with personal innovation in aviation. So I'm going to read this thing that we're going to give to you, and it's, going to, it's for you to always remember the RV-1. The RV-1 is going to be cared for in perpetuity in our museum, and it will be kept in airworthy condition for your wishes, okay? Yes. We will care for this, and we will treasure this for what it is. But it says on the plaque to Mr. Van Grosnen, in appreciation of the innovative design and craftsmanship that created the RV-1, to preserved forever in the EA Museum. All right. Thank you, King. On behalf of all of us. Arrow TV is brought to you by. Avidyne is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy to use avionics. And the new IFD 540 and 440 FMS GPS Navcoms set a new standard for ease of use and simplicity. As plug and play replacements for legacy 530 and 430 series navigators, the hybrid touch user interface of the IFD 540 and IFD 440 makes it much easier to access the information you want while reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy Avidyne. <laughs>